The amendment be agreed to, and I call the Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker, and thank you to those members who have contributed to the debate on the Coastal Trading Revitalising Australian Shipping Amendment Bill 2017. The federal government is committed to a safe, secure, and efficient transport system, and coastal shipping has a significant role to play. The amendments to the Coastal Trading Revitalising Australian Shipping Act 2012, the Coastal Trading Act, are necessary to simplify coastal trading regulation to reduce the administrative impost associated with the current regime, to expand the coverage of the Coastal Trading Act and to provide clarity on a number of minor technical matters. The reforms will facilitate the government's objective of having more competitive and efficient coastal shipping services and will benefit Australia's manufacturing, mining and agricultural industries. This bill retains the major elements of the current coastal trading licence framework with amendments to regulatory settings uh, to minimise industry burden and costs. Deputy Speaker, easing the current regulatory burden on the maritime industry will provide greater flexibility to buyers and suppliers of shipping services and will ensure coastal shipping remains a viable part of the national transport Thanks, system. Between 2010 and 2030, Australia's <laughs> overall freight task is expected to grow by 80 per cent, underpinned by strong growth in domestic movements of bulk commodity exports, particularly iron ore and coal. This bill reduces the regulatory burden for shipping users and provides further opportunity to use shipping to move domestic freight. The bill will remove the five-year voyage minimum requirement for issuing temporary licences, thereby allowing companies to use spot hire at short notice for passengers and cargo. In one instance, the shipper was unable to obtain a temporary licence to move a piece of heavy machinery between two ports as it was a single voyage and therefore ineligible for a temporary licence. The machinery was instead moved by road, which required a police escort due to the size of the machinery and overhead utilities had to be moved. This was more complicated and more costly than a voyage by ship would have been, but it was only the only available option at the time due to the five voyage minimum requirement for temporary licences. The government's amendments will also make it easier for the energy sector to respond to shortages by allowing the movement of crude oil and condensate from offshore facilities and through the removal of the five-year voyage minimum requirement. This means that in future, if a major city such as Melbourne or Sydney is facing a fuel shortage and fuel is available elsewhere and needs to be moved quickly, providers will be able to apply for a temporary licence with a single voyage to move that product without worrying about scheduling another four unnecessary voyages. The amendments will also allow the uh, expedited consideration of a temporary licence to be used in an emergency situation, uh, including relating to energy security with the licence valid for 65 days to allow sufficient time to respond to the emergency. Removing the five-year uh, five voyage sorry, minimum will also allow super yachts to operate under the licensing system, opening up trade and tourism opportunities. Application processes will be streamlined to remove unnecessary delays and inefficiencies such as the need to consult on applications where there are no relevant Australian flag vessels such as petroleum tankers. Tolerance limits will also increase to provide the shipping industry the flexibility it needs and deserves. Reducing red tape is a key priority of the Liberal and Nationals yeah, government yeah. and a central aspect of these policy reforms. Presently, a holder of a temporary licence needs to provide information to the government three times about each voyage. Under the new arrangements, notifications will be required only if the details are different from those already provided. The bill extends coverage of the existing Coastal Trading Act to allow the carriage of petroleum products from Australia's offshore facilities to the mainland for processing. Deputy Speaker, this change will help make the use of Australian refineries more viable and contribute to fuel security. The government's amendments will also open up Australia to exciting new tourism opportunities in the super yacht sector. The current regulatory settings of the Coastal Trading Act exclude super yacht operators from gaining a temporary licence uh, for a round-trip voyage and force any super yacht operator wanting to visit Australia to pay customs importation duty and taxes on the vessel. This is prohibitively expensive for super yacht operators, so they bypass Australia and they cruise to New Zealand. Fiji or Vanuatu, where regulatory settings are much more welcome. In 2016, Super Yacht Australia and the Queensland Treasury commissioned an economic impact study of the super yacht sector for the Queensland Labor government. 
Queensland's super yacht strategy envisions by 2023 Queensland's share of the global super yacht sector will have increased by 10 per cent, and that Queensland will be recognised as the key super yacht hub in the Asia Pacific region. This growth will, will create thousands of new highly skilled jobs across the state and contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to the economy. These changes will bring important trade and tourism benefits to rural and regional areas on the far north Queensland coast. The Whit Sundays and Port Douglas, among others, are poised to benefit from super yacht tourism. Deputy Speaker. In South East Queensland, it is expected to contribute more than $1.1 billion to gross state product and support nearly 8,000 full-time jobs by 2021, up from $630. $2 million and 4,535 jobs full time in 2016. They're impressive figures. It will also, for the first time, allow ships to carry out scheduled maintenance in Australia under a licence. This change will encourage the use of our dry docking and repair facilities and potentially grow Australia's dry dock industry. And that's something we all want. Importantly, these reforms will not take away any of the protections provided to Australian flag vessels operating under general licences. Australian licensed vessels will in still enjoy unrestricted access to the Australian coast and will have the opportunity to contest voyages applied for by foreign ships where appropriate. They will continue to enjoy various shipping tax incentives. This includes the ability to claim income tax exemption for qualifying shipping activities accelerated depreciation for certain owners of vessels and rollover relief for eligible Australian ship owners. Australia's future growth will be significantly influenced by our capacity to access safe, secure, efficient and competitively priced transport services. The amendments in this bill uh, will help ensure that ships seeking to provide services in Australia are able to do so with a minimum of red tape and regulatory burden. I've heard the Labor Party discuss the consultation process. I want to assure the House, I want to assure the House that broad consultation was undertaken uh, to help inform the development of the bill. An options paper released in 2014 received 85 submissions, with the department meeting with 103 stakeholders. In 2015, roundtable discussions were held with the then minister and with industry stakeholder groups. In 2016, the then minister met with the MUA and the Australian Maritime Officers Union uh, and the Australian Institute of Marine Power Engineers and the Maritime Industry Australia Limited, previously known as the Australian Shipping Association. Uh, as well as undertaking meetings with users of coastal shipping and stakeholders with passenger shipping interests. A discussion paper released in 2017 on coastal trading reform received 67 submissions. Deputy Speaker, I want to acknowledge the Shadow Minister's contribution and his amendment. The government will not be supporting his amendment. But in doing so, I want to assure the member for Grainler and this parliament this, that this government is committed to delivering fuel security, increasing tourism, backing local industry, growing our economy and, and creating local jobs while supporting, while supporting local workers. This bill addresses these issues and I encourage the Labor Party, I encourage the Labor Party to support it. I commend the bill to the House, Deputy Speaker.